All right, so for our last recording, we're gonna talk about phylogeny and the tree of life and uh, in bio two, we do this more, but I do want you to get kind of an understanding of what we're trying to do. And it's really taking all the species on the planet and trying to fit them into this tree of life. Where do they, where do they evolve? Who are their closest ancestors? Um, and those kinds, kinds of information. So I wanna give you some words and definitions. Phylogeny is really the evolutionary history of an organism. And there are different ways to, to look at this. And the, the discipline kind of focused on this is called systematics. Um, and so what they do is they go through and you try to figure out how are things um, related to each other. And what you do is you know, here, for instance, we're looking at animals with limbs. So um, they don't have everything, but they're looking at pretty much the um, uh, uh, lizards and snakes, which is all one big happy um, class together. And so what happens though is snakes fall out here. Geckos are kind of one of the uh, original uh, early, early lizards and then snakes fall out and then we have these um, glass lizards uh, that don't have any limbs and so what happens is this this actually has evolved twice and so it's hard to figure those things out you know but a a um, glass lizard or a legless lizard um is is truly a lizard and not a snake there are differences all right, so coming up with this, and you're gonna find this in lab, uh, uh, Carl, Carl Linnaeus, Carlos Linnaeus, uh, Carl Linne, lots of different names. He actually uh, Latinized his own name, and he came up with the idea of, you know, we have the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Um, we did that in week one, but he's the one that came up with the uh, genus species as a uh, way of naming things, binomial nomenclature. Uh, the genus is always capitalized and the species is never capitalized. And when you write it, uh, you underline it. Uh, when you type it, it's usually italicized or it can be bolded or it can actually be underlined, but it needs to be um, segregated out. So uh, here, here is kind of the way we do this. The, uh, uh, these are all carnivores or are found in the order carnivora. And then the cat family would be Philidae. And then we have Mastilidae, which includes the uh, badgers and otters and, and even some of the uh, weasels and things. And then the canids would be the, uh, the dog-like species. So what we're trying to do is, is look for how closely related are they. Um, and what you're always looking for these is um, some different things, uh, some different titles. Okay, so, so we're always looking for a common ancestor and that's you know all, usually on one edge and, and that's where everything comes from. And you can see here that everything kind of branches off this one area. Uh, and then each one of these would be a lineage, lineage. And then when you see these blue structures, it typically means that there's an ancestor in the lineage. So something was the ancestor to frogs, um, and so you'll see those pop up. And then what you're going to see is what we call sister taxa. And what happens is when they revolve around a common ancestor, uh, these would be our closest relatives. And again, this would be a bonobo chimp, uh, which shares uh, about 98% of our DNA with us. Um, and they can all look kind of different. There's a vertical tree, a diagonal tree. Um, depending on who's drawing them up. It all says kind of the same thing, so don't get thrown off when you look at these. Um, some try to convey more information than others, um, but uh, this is a cl cladogram. These are kind of one of the more common ones you're seeing today, uh, a little bit easier uh, to draw. Um, and then here we have um, some others. And what they like about these, some of these will actually kind of give you the idea how long they have been, um, although, uh, they're kind of getting away from that. Okay, and realize that they can rotate. So, so these all say the same thing. So you got to be very careful on the way you look at these things. Uh, so there are rotating, rotating points and branches. Um, so again, here we're saying that frogs, humans, chimps, lizards all have a, a common ancestor. And saying the same thing over here. It's just that um, the common ancestor is here. 
So um, depending on who you include in, in when you make your phylogeny uh, might, might determine kind of how it looks like. So um, when you're building these, you have to be aware of some different terms, homologies versus analogies. And the one on the left, I've shown you a picture very similar to that with the forearms. That was one of our pieces of evidence for evolution. Um, and here we're showing the four limbs and the bones and they're colored to show you that all those bones uh, exist in all three because all mammals have a common ancestor. So that would be a homology. Analogy on the other hand means they're, they're not coming from a very close common ancestor. Uh, they look the same, not because they're closely related, they look the same because of the environment. And so we have uh, two animals. One we have down on the bottom is a golden mole in Africa. And this is a placental mammal, so it gives birth like humans do. And uh, if you look at it, it has no eyes, sharp claws, um, big nose, kind of rotund body, very little tail. And again, that's very good for living underground. The one up on the top, the Australian mole, is not really a mole. Um, same features, but that is actually a marsupial. The babies are actually in a pouch. And so uh, again, they, they obviously, uh, mammals have a common ancestor, uh, but recently uh, these things are, are really far apart. Uh, this is a, a rodent in the rodentia family. And, and this is a marsupial, very, very close to the, um, the breaking of, of mammals, uh, the origin of mammals. So again, this would be an analogy. So you wouldn't want to put them as a six sister taxa in, in a phylogeny. Okay, cladistics, I'm gonna just spend some time on this one only because this is kind of the one that, that is kind of winning out over the years now, um, what most people are trying to put up. And there's different ways of grouping things together. So I want you to know uh, uh, the definitions of these. Uh, monophyletic, mono means one. So it means that you have the ancestor and all its descendants, that would be a monophyletic group. A paraphyletic group would consider uh, um, an ancestor and some, but not all of its descendants. For some reason, you're, um, you're ignoring one. Uh, for so, so for here, for instance, uh, even toed ungulates, which are deer and um, things like that. And then here you have a hippopotamus. And then all of a sudden you have cetaceans. And for some reason, you're keeping the hippo with this group, but you're, you're leaving whales and dolphins out. And it turns out that would be uh, paraphyletic um, because you're not for some reason including this, which you should be. And then uh, you have polyphyletic, which is really substantial. These two kind of look the same through an analogous, um, but they're not that closely related and they don't have a common ancestor. So the definition of polyphyletic is an ancestor. Uh, it's actually two different ancestors. Um, and then obviously you're ignoring other parts of the descendants. So here, number one would be monophyletic because it's this ancestor with A, B, and C. Okay, if I was to do a one here and only include B and C, that would begin to, would be a paraphyletic group. Here they're showing you, um, and I, it's being blocked by something here, but uh, a D, E, F, and it's ignoring G. And so D, E, and F would be paraphyletic because you're ignoring. And then here you can see they've grouped A, B, C, and D together. And actually, you're, to do that, you're going through two different ancestors, so that will be polyphyletic. Um, when you're looking at characteristics, you also need to look at some different things. There are shared ancestral characters. That means uh, it's called a plisomorphy. That is something that all those species have. So if I'm looking here um, uh, on my right-hand side, um, I'm looking all of those. A shared ancestral character would be a notochord. Uh, the precursor to the backbone. Uh, so that is something that everybody has because it's an ancestral characteristic. A derived character, synapomorphy, that would be actually something that has been derived later, evolved later. And an example of that might be um, uh, amnio amnion, an amniotic egg. Uh, so that'd be found in turtles and leopards and birds, uh, all reptiles, birds and mammals um, have an amniotic egg. Uh, so that would be a derived character. Um, and again, those, those can slide depending on what you're grouping together. And that's what makes it confusing. Um, so anyway, but um, like a notochord technically could be a derived character if you're going real basic. 
um, and, and looking at vertebrates compared to invertebrates. Um, so, so those can, can shift. So plisomorphy again, shared ancestral character, something that's been there. And synapomorphy is a derived character, something that has evolved later. All right, and phylogenetic trees again. Um, we're trying to to show where they where they match, and and I'm I'm showing you this because um, we now believe that birds actually um, have evolved from dinosaurs, an ancestor that they shared with dinosaurs, and um, we get this from from several things. Is one now we have found that lots of the dinosaurs had feathers. Actually, it's believed T. Rex had feathers. Um, so Jurassic Park got um, a little less scary when you have big bird chasing you. Um, uh, but those feathers were small and, and again, not for flight, obviously for warmth. And the kind of a, a little little peach fuzz on them. Um, and then also we could do it from behavior. Um, and what we have found in dinosaurs is they nest very similar to what you would expect in birds. And so it's not just the, just the bones themselves, but also uh, we're looking at um, other types of fossil evidence um, on behavior and things uh, that, that help us draw these trees. So I wanna make sure you understand it's just not bones um, or DNA. We're, we're using all kinds of information um, to, to, to build these phylogenetic trees. And that will be the recordings for the week.